Right, so the inverter has just arrived along with the switches that we need. 22 mil panel cutout switches and the braking resistor, which is quite a meaty lump, nicely made. So, put that this side. Let's cut into our switches first and get them configured how we want them. So we've just gone with these WEG switches. They're really um, good value for money from Inverter Drive Supermarket, which is where all this has come from. So they're just like NO and NC contacts. And they've got a contact block which I've not used these ones before, but they look fairly self-explanatory, like so. Pretty simple, uh, pretty simple to do. And then there'll be some push button heads here. So that was an NO, the bluntest scissors in the world. And there's the actual M20, oh no, sorry, there'll be 22 mil um, switches, push buttons. And that is literally just an actuator for that contact block. So you screw that onto your panel, your machine, and then the contact block, basically one way or another, should just press in or screw in. Right, this is a pressing type. There you go. And that's it. And then when you actuate the green button, the NO switch is, actu is activated. So we should have um, an NC and an NO switch here. Rip this open. This be... There we go. That's easier, isn't it? There's an NC. They're just colour coded red and green. Another contact block. And there should be another push button. That one is not made of the same material. That one is a cut it job. These were like three pound something a switch. Whereas if you look at the Schneider ones that we normally use, you're probably looking about 15 quid a switch. So quite a big difference. Um, that one's up there then, like so. These screws onto him. So we can go and install these on the machine. That's very nice. Obviously I've showed you the braking resistor. We also have an M22, 22 mil panel cutout uh, potentiometer. This is a 10K pot, I believe. Yep, 10K there. I'm not sure if you can make that out. And yep, that's um, nice and smooth. So I think that was about 20 quid. Again, if you want to buy the Schneider ones, they're 50. Um, Let's have a look at this inverter. So we've seen the braking resistor. Let's get rid of this big box. So this inverter is a Universal Motors. I've not used this one before. Where is it made? Well, they run out of Portugal, apparently. It doesn't actually say where it's made. Probably China. Let's have a look. See, uh, the inverters I normally buy from Inverter Supermarket are Parker's, but the Parker one was about uh, 40 quid dearer. Right, comes with a manual, which is always a good start. So Parker's sometimes don't. And then you have to go online. Inverter. Only 1.1 kilowatt. Right, 
don't know. That's the inverter there. Pretty, uh, pretty standard, really. So PB'd out, that is the braking resistor. So we can break the little cutouts there out of the motor, uh, out of that end plate, that protective plate. I'm just gonna zoom you in a bit so that you can see what I'm talking about. So live and neutral in, so that's your supply voltage. UV and W goes down to the motor. You've got a cutout for your earth and positive and PB are for the braking resistor. And that, I believe, just slots in there into the bottom like that so that's simple so this is going to need one of them I should think so this is a um, what do you call these a plus minus screwdriver this is a PB Swiss one these are perfect for these little connectors now this has got ring terminals and I'm not sure they're going to fit actually they are quite big ring terminals they don't that's interesting but this is the recommended um, resistor so they haven't really thought about that very much uh, so, like most, like most, um, what do you call them? Inverters. It looks like we've got S1, S2, S3, and S4. So that's four inputs. You got ten volts AI of two and AI of three. I'm pretty sure that's for your pot. And then we should have a common for S1, S2, and S4. Maybe the common is the 24 coming up. Or is that the common on the 10? I don't know, but we'll figure it out. I'm gonna have a little look through the manual. That's just the start. Right, so the manual is absolutely useless to us because it's all in Portuguese. Um, yeah, completely Portuguese. There's no English section in there, which is disappointing. So that goes in the bin. We'll have to get the manual online and uh, we'll go from there. Right, excuse the mess. We are now running. We've tuned the inverter. We've installed the potentiometer, and I'll show you now, that's just on the front there. That increases and decreases the hertz. We need to set a lower limit on the hertz, uh, the frequency, but yeah, that's max and min. So at the minute we've set the upper limit as 50 hertz, but we can increase that to like, uh, we'll work out what will give you 2000, uh, 15, no, cause it's 1500 RPM top. So it's more or less one to one gear ratio. So we'll need to increase the motor speed by another uh, 500 RPM. So we'll work out what that equates to in frequency uh, to give you 2000 RPM. Um, so just got wiring the switches now. So yeah, let's run it up. So at the minute, start still on here. So nice controlled start up. And let's just hit max there, and then we reduce the pot. Slow it down. It will set the bottom speed as maybe 10 or 15 hertz. That's 10 there. And that is slow. And speed that up again. 50 hertz. It slowly climbs back up. We can increase that acceleration time, obviously. Um, yeah. Okay, so 50 hertz. We should have 1500 RPM, which we do. We increase to 64 hertz. We now have 2000 RPM. So we've got another 500 out of the VFD.
Right, so there's a bit of a mess of wires here, but I'll try and explain to you what's going on. I'm not using the doer switch on top of the machine, that red handle there at the minute, because I'm just uh, testing. But I have replicated what the doer switch will be doing, basically, with this switch here, which has got an NC and an NO contact. And they're both actuated at the same time you turn this 45 to, or 90 degree switch. Um, right, so, NC, NO. And we've gone with, the, the manual only gives four different options for wiring this up. So you can have a two wire control, which is just a pulse of push button switches for forwards and reverse. Now that'd be great, but you don't wanna be pressing a button to forwards and reverse, you wanna be throwing a lever really. So, um, you know, we go with a three wire control and that's fine. But the problem is you can activate reverse with a flick switch but neither of these options they give actually allow you to then go back into forwards without pressing another button again. Even if you then open reverse, it doesn't go back to forwards. Um, so the best way I could see to do it was with a relay. Um, so we've used a little 24 volt relay using the power from the VFD. And it's only a little Finder type relay there. And uh, it's a bit of a mess of wires. But what this basically does is the first time you press the green button, NO, to start the machine, it energizes that relay. If you hit the red button, it de-energizes the relay and there's a little holding circuit there. What that then does is a 24 volt from the relay then comes down to your direction switch and that provides a permanent live to the direction control so that then you can switch between forwards and reverse without having to press the green button again. So it's a bit of a workaround. The manual is obviously in Portuguese. I've got an English one, but it doesn't give you any more um, options for wiring this up. So maybe there is a method of doing this, but it's not in the manual that I can see. Um, someone will probably tell me I'm being stupid and there's an easier way to do it. But I don't like the idea of having the invert a uh, the motor run the minute you've activated that switch i would prefer for that you press the green button you know the machine the inverter runs press the red button the inverter stops um because otherwise you could turn the power on and you've left that in forwards and the machine will start or in reverse and the machine will automatically start running um so yes that's the um that's the wiring obviously we've got some tidying up to do now we've got to transfer this over to the um, these three leads that come from the doer switch here but once that's done we can then set about setting up the brake right oh so the Kerry lathe is now complete so you can see we've got our new switch plate on the front of the machine so we've got start stop pot for speed control and a jog function the other, uh, the other switch here is for the coolant pump, now single phase, forwards and reverse there, and um, everything else is more or less a standard. Using the original isolator, so we turn that on, hear the uh, VFD click inside, and uh, I'll take you through some of the bits. So let's put it in a, a little bit of a lower speed. Green. Starts the machine off. We're in forwards at the minute. All works and functions as normal. Clutch works. Reverse. On the duo switch. We've also incorporated a spindle brake using a braking resistor. The original clutch has got a brake quite a quick break as well we've now got a break on stop speed control is with the pot and we're over speeding the motor to get a max speed at the spindle of 2000 and obviously you can have it dead slow
and the, the brake is quite effective. We've also incorporated a jog. So that works really nice. All complete. I'll show you inside the cabinet quickly. So this inside the cabinet, we've got a coolant pump with a miniature circuit breaker, cap to run on single phase. The backs of our switches here, this is all 24 volt control. VFDs mounted on the dim rail at the back. As you can see, 66 hertz is our max speed, uh, max frequency. And the minimum is 20, just under 20. Got a couple of little uh, DIN terminals there for the forwards and reverse, which are these three leads coming down. And that there, the silver thing, is the braking resistor. So that is all in the electrical cabinet. Apart from the new switches, you wouldn't know that the machine was running on single phase now instead of three phase.